STEM is an acronym for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. It is a term that garners attention from experts in education, politics, business, and economics. But why is there such a focus on STEM, and why should we be concerned about the inequities that exist among individuals participating in these fields? On average, STEM workers earn more than their equally educated counterparts, and STEM supports two-thirds of all U.S. jobs, one-third of those being direct STEM professionals like engineers, research scientists, and physicians. STEM accounts for 69% of the total U.S. GDP and generates over $2.3 trillion in federal tax revenue. STEM education has become a national priority due to the high demand for STEM professionals. According to the U.S. Department of Commerce, almost all of the 30 fastest growing occupations over the next decade will require intermediate or advanced knowledge of science, technology, engineering, and or mathematics. Men make up 72% of the science and engineering workforce. As demand increases, the continued underrepresentation of women will devastate our ability to continue as a world leader in science and engineering. It is important to note that STEM is a large umbrella and it encompasses many subjects and subspecialties, some of which women have become very well represented. Take biological sciences, for example. Women earn 59% of the undergraduate degrees in that field. And in 2019, for the first time in history, women exceeded men in total medical school enrollment. In agriculture and natural science, once a boys club, now boasts a 51% female graduate rate. So if women only make up 28% of the STEM workforce, despite such strides, what is going on? Well, the gender gap in STEM is more of a TE gap. Men earn over 80% of the engineering and tech degrees in the U.S. today. So why do women continue to be underrepresented in engineering? Systematic exclusion takes time to overcome. Georgia Tech, one of the nation's top engineering schools, opened its doors in 1888, but did not admit white women until 1957. The first black woman did not attend Georgia Tech until 1970. In 2017, Georgia Tech was the top producer of female engineers in the U.S., with 517 graduates, comprising 26% of Tech's graduating class. Nationwide that same year, women made up just 20% of engineering students receiving bachelor's degrees. Computer science has taken a unique trajectory. In most STEM fields, women have consistently gained ground, but that is not the case in computer science. In 1984, women comprised 37% of computer science graduates, but have since seen a steady decrease. Women now only earn about 18% of the bachelor's degrees in technology. Linda Sachs, a professor of higher education at UCLA's Graduate School of Education and Information, suggests one key factor is society's portrayal of programmers, especially in the media. Think Mr. Robot and Silicon Valley. Programming is seen as something that's overtly masculine and geeky. Where women are historically drawn to careers where they can be change makers, Sachs is concerned that girls often fail to realize the societal impacts programming can have. The lack of women graduating with engineering and computer science degrees has often been seen as a failure of higher education. But the percentage of men and women who declare a major in STEM drop out or switch majors at about the same rate. The issue is getting women interested in engineering and tech prior to leaving high school. For generations, people have questioned and falsely believed that math is just something boys are better at. But studies show no difference in the numerical skills based on gender of infants and children. Cornell University psychologist Dr. Stephen Cece explained, If you look at students scoring in the top 1 in 10,000 in mathematics in 1983, there were 13 boys for every girl. Since then, until 2007, that gap has shrunk to somewhere between 2.7 and 4 boys for every girl. So if the difference were just in the genome, there would be not be that improvement. A more logical explanation, and one with the studies to back it up, is that girls have less confidence in math. According to the University of Wisconsin psychologist, Dr. Janet Hyde, even when girls are getting better grades, boys are more confident in math. It's important to understand what might be sapping girls' confidence. Culture plays by far the bigger role in men and boys' higher achievement and interests. 
In 2019, girls and boys had the exact same average score on the NAEP math assessment. As of 2018, women in the United States now earn 43% of bachelor's degrees in mathematics and statistics, and 39% of the degrees in physical science. If girls just weren't good at math, how would they be doing this? So maybe boys are simply better at computers and engineering. No again. In 2018, eighth grade girls scored on average five points higher than boys on the engineering and technology exam as reported by the NAEP. But a gender gap in participation starts to appear as girls take fewer of the more advanced STEM courses and tests as they get closer to college. This gap widens the longer girls are in school, and by the end of high school, male students were more likely than female students to take engineering. 21% versus 8%, and enroll in AP Computer Science, 77% versus 23%. Girls must see themselves as scientists. Most children, especially boys, don't see women as scientists. Draw a Scientist is a research project created in 1966 by David Chambers. The preface was simple. He asked children to draw a scientist. The first study was published in 1983 and only 0.6% of children drew a woman scientist. None of the male students drew a woman. Five decades and 20,000 drawings later, 45% of girls and 5% of boys drew women scientists. At age six, girls drew women 70% of the time, but by age 16, 75% of girls drew men. Both teachers and curriculum can inadvertently contribute to these perceptions. Teachers who are anxious about teaching math have shown to share that math anxiety with their female students. It does not have the same impact on their male students. They also tend to be overly reliant on textbooks and rote methods of instruction. Images in textbooks can subconsciously result in self-doubt in girls. Adding images of female mathematicians or scientists throughout the classroom and work that contextualizes women's achievements in these subjects can shift perceptions about who belongs. Focusing on the interdisciplinary and problem-focused nature of STEM is key, recommends Dr. Jill Marshall, Associate Co-Director of UTeach at the University of Texas at Austin. Project-based instruction just generally draws in more people because it addresses problems that people see as relevant, said Marshall. In 2008, a study by the National Academy of Engineering asked people if they wanted to be engineers. Girls were twice as likely as boys to say no, but when asked if they would like to design a safe water system, save the rainforest, or use DNA to solve crimes, the girls answered yes. How can engineering and computer science benefit from women? According to Catherine W. Phillips, the former senior vice dean at Columbia Business School, diversity enhances creativity. It encourages the search for new information and perspectives, leading to better decision making and problem solving. When people are brought together to solve problems in groups, they bring different information, opinions, and perspectives. This makes obvious sense when we talk about the diversity of disciplinary backgrounds. Think of the interdisciplinary team building a car. The same logic applies to social diversity. People are different from one another in race, gender, and other dimensions, and they bring unique information and experiences to bear on the task at hand. A male and female engineer might have perspectives as different from one another as an engineer and a physicist, and that's a good thing. President Obama once stated that of all the things I really strongly believe is that we need to have more girls interested in math, science, and engineering. We've got half of the population that is way underrepresented in those fields, and that means we've got a whole bunch of talent not being encouraged in the way they need to be.